Okay, so it's a nice day. The ground's kind of dry. Still kind of wet underneath, but not too bad, so I can actually get on my knees. And today I decided to drag out what we call around here a salt block Fairbanks Morris. And the reason we call it a salt block is, look at it, it's a big block. And they weigh a ton, too. They're one and a half horse, style Z, not style Z, model type Z, style D, one and a half horse. And I drug him out today. So, I had this one running probably five years ago, I think. So he sat a good for a while, so it's nice and dusty. I don't think I'll clean it up or anything, I'm just going to get running today. Today might be a stockpile day so I can get a few other videos for future weeks in case the weather ain't too good. So I've got this I'm making a video for for today and then I've got a Maytag over there I'm going to try and get running too. So I guess the least I can do right now is get started. He's loose. For the sake of the video I put a muffler on it because normally I just ran it straight. Originally they had a, they, all they had was a plate bolted to the block. So as you can see there there's this plate in the bolt hole. So it would just been a, just literally just a plate bolted on there and it would make itself a muffler on the block. So kind of a weird little muffler they had on them. All I should probably have to do to get this running is get a spark plug wire because I don't know what happened to the old one. Maybe it's laying in there somewhere I'll look. Maybe file all the points. I'm not sure I haven't tested spark yet. That's so what I'll find out once I get spark plug wire. I haven't checked the tank yet. The lid's stuck on it because I think I got it on cockeyed. But if the tank's clean, I should just have to literally just get the points working and it should start right up. That's the hope anyway. So, see how this goes. But yeah, I got my wire here. Regular copper core wire for a spark plug. But if I remember correctly, I think this might be on backwards here, the output. I'm not sure if you can even see that. No, you can't really very well, but right here is the where the wire goes in. And if I remember correctly how these originally were, is the spark plug wire supposed to go right here, down, around, through the car the thing on top of the carburetor intake here, into the spark plug. So I think this cap might be on backwards, so I'm going to grab a screwdriver for that. I don't know why it's faced this direction, because that would be a long route anyway you take it. It might have been something I did when I was younger because I didn't figure it out. There's always that chance. Because, yeah, I did fix this one when I was just beginning. That screw ain't coming loose. Might have to get a bigger screwdriver. Okay, so I forgot to turn the camera back on, but I got that turned around. So, I should be able to run the wire now. Get a little bit of wire bent over on the end there. Put that in the... It's good enough to get a good measurement here and I can deal with it later. And then we run it. Roughly. So I got the wire in there, I've got it fed over here and down through the hole in the carburetor into the thing and now I was going to work at getting the loop at the end of the wire that can attach to the spark plug. And I just nipped off part of, the, part of the wire by accident because I did it too hard. So all I have is this short little bit right now, but I could make it longer if I need to in the future. Right now, that's all I'm going to use. Not sure how well the camera can see that. Okay, so we've got it all reassembled and such. And it seemed to have gas, so we'll try and start it. See if it blows up or something because of the possible air leak.
governor. One of the two. That's reassuring. Ah, oh, I shocked myself. God dang it. Oh. See what's wrong here. Oh, buzzy. Uh, uh, here's what my hands normally do. They still shake, but... God dang it. The best approach, anyway. Better than letting it explode or something. Uh, might have to cut and wait for a bit because my arm's spazzing out. Uh, held on to that way too long. Okay, so let me show you what I discovered. Look here. Does that look like a gasket? No? It's metal? No, oh, you notice. That's good. Now look at the carburetor. Does that look like a gasket? No? Does that look flat to you? No? It looks a little curved? Well, maybe that's because there wasn't any gasket and the pot metal carb's bent. Well, not bent, warped from age. So I have to go flatten this and get a gasket. Fun. Might cause it to race like that. Because I had this thing set the last time, though I don't know how it's doing that now because it's only been five years. I wouldn't think that much would have changed, but it would have idled, it idled fairly nicely when you have it set to idle. So yeah, I, I need to get, a, get this flattened and make a gasket. Fun. Okay, so here's the gasket I made. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but all it needs to do is seal. Here's the smoothed out carburetor. And I didn't do anything here because this wasn't too bad, but I will get this crud out here and possibly scratch off some crud just in case. And then put that back on and hope that it works this time. So now it's holding it down, which is because I adjusted the governor shaft is right here. And this is clamped onto it, which hooks up to the throttle. I adjusted it so it was slower, just in case that was a problem, that it was loose or something. And I learned that apparently when I was messing with it before, I popped it. There's a spot here that makes it pop past a certain point. And then I put it on idle, which kept it from, makes it refuse to go to idle. So, pop it past that, hold it there. Hopefully that'll not race off like crazy this time. I thought about clamping a vice grip on this so I can press the throttle down manually in case the governor is broken. But it shouldn't be broken because it ran fine the last time I had this out. So I feel like it would just, I don't know why it would do it now of all times. Unless the governor was sticking because, oh wait, I already think that it was because it popped over a lobe or something inside because I messed with it. Okay, so get the needle in here. They made it so you have to have the needle out to take the carb out because it still goes through a little hole in the block of the engine. The whole entire main body of the engine is just three parts. The head, the base, and the cover. So they made it made one big casting for the water cooler, the carburetor hole, the muffler, the crank and all that's one big casting. Which is kinda cool. At the same time it's probably a pain pain for them to make and kinda is a pain to work on because there's some tight spots that I'm experiencing now. Okay, so maybe this try won't try and explode. That'd be a that'd be nice. I might have got.
got too slow now because I since I adjusted the Yep, the governor ain't working. Still. Okay, so I'm kind of tucked away inside here. Mostly because it's real windy out and you're just tucked behind the door there so I don't get a bunch of wind noise. So, this is... I decided to make it a one part thing here because it got it managed to decide to do that today. So I'm going to be taking the two bolts out here and it, in theory, should pop off. But I'll find out. So... I'm hoping I can do it with just my bag of tools because I have a bag of tools I use and I also have my actual toolbox. My toolbox is kind of put away for the winter still and I'm not ready to dig it out yet. So I'm hoping the bag of tools I have can get it off okay. Okay, so you see that right here? That's the governor. It's spring loaded. Oops, sorry about that. And you see the pin right there? See how it's not on it? Well, that's the throttle pin. And I thought I felt something slip earlier, and I was correct. That was what slipped earlier. So, there's my problem. So that, that that makes it figured out a little better. It looks like the governor itself's okay. I think a gasket might be dead. I'm not sure. Seems like there's a lot of extra chunks. That's sad. I might have to. I might just go with it and see what happens. If it starts leaking a lot of oil, we'll know it don't work. Look at the little piston too, it's so tiny. But yeah, it's got the two bearings for the cam with the little oil catchers on it. A cool thing I just noticed is it doesn't run the... Wow, there's a chip on that. Oh, that's the timing chip, never mind. But the cool thing I noticed here is it's got the cam gear and then it's got the gear for the mag, so that's kind of cool.
somebody in the comments asked if I would put break one of the big ones and uh, I didn't get to do that in those videos so I break this little guy since I thought about it. Did pretty good. So I'm gonna keep running until I got most of my gas out and the water will probably boil at that point. There goes the rest of my afternoon just to play with this thing. So yeah.